Alright, what's up guys? Thought I'd make a quick video. Show you guys a couple neat little ways to repair these low loss fittings. I know a lot of, I haven't really seen anyone on YouTube actually using these low loss fittings. I've seen a lot of uh, ball valve setups. And I understand these do start to leak occasionally. I've used them for many years. I, I kind of like these better than ball valves, to be honest with you. This is my little setup for my Testo Smart Probes to add refrigerant. This is just if I need a little 90 on a unit, I can throw this on there. It doesn't have to be a low loss because typically you are putting this on the low side. But I just found it handy handy dandy it was something I already had but I'm going to replace these seals in these valves and I thought I'd show you real quick what you need to do it do you need some little circlet pliers I use a little pick and a regular screwdriver thank you Mr. Mike Polis he sent me these screwdrivers a long time ago and I still keep them around the house for things like this before we get started on that, check out my first modification to the Testo probes. I hot glued a little bit of sandpaper in here to make them grippier. Haven't really got a chance to see how good they work out in the field. Problem I was having is I'd put them on a line and they would, especially if it was a vertical line, I would stick them on a line and it would just fall. It would cock over so I used hot glue because hot glue you can just peel right off if I have to replace that sandpaper pad it, it won't damage it in any way you can get hot glue right off it seems to be stuck pretty good so if any of you guys are having that same problem you might want to try that out it's quick easy and I also kept a couple pieces of sandpaper cloth in here just to clean up the lines a little bit while I'm testing them um, Alright, well let's get started. So, there's a little circlip right here. Let's go ahead and get that out. Real easy to pop that out. Okay. And then this whole cap comes right off. And this is where you need the screwdriver. Sometimes these are really stiff if, if no one's ever done this before. just unscrew this housing sometimes ooh, cut myself hazard of the job hazard of the job this is real life this is real life damn I messed my video up okay so we're just gonna finish taking this off and I'll show you the internal parts here so we've got a little spring And this is the uh, this is actually what when you put the when you put this on a Schrader. Okay, so this lifts up a little bit, and then when you take it off, that's that's kind of what closes it off. <laughs> Inspect this seal. If you pull the low loss fitting off the unit and it doesn't hold the refrigerant back, this little rubber seal either has a little piece of uh, basically some little object in it or the seal is damaged. They actually do sell just this whole assembly here as a repair kit for about uh, maybe a third of what a whole low loss fitting costs. But these look like they're in good shape here. Just needs a new o-ring inside. So inspect that. Sorry about the blood. I'll get some new napkins so you guys don't have to look at my bloody finger. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to replace this little o-ring. This is the most common part that uh, goes wrong. And what will happen is 
but if your hose leaks when you put it on the unit. Let's get us a new one here. Here's the part number. You just pop this little sucker back into its groove. Like so. And reassemble. Make sure your little check valve goes in with the core depressor facing out, spring. Boop, boop. And again, inspect this seal. Mine looks good. And we just screw that back in. See if I can stab myself again. Doesn't have to be real tight. You'll never get it back off if you have to do it again. And I usually like to clean this up a little bit. Clean the inside up and that. Slide nice, clean my little circ clip up. Make sure it's snapped all the way in the groove. Now I've got a good no-loss fitting. Yeah, these can, this can be the hardest part right here. Mine's got a little imperfection in that seal. That's not a huge deal. Sometimes if these are really tight, what I've done too is I'll get a, uh, a knife or a putty knife and stick it right across here and use get that more leverage and like I said put some channel locks on it. But if you're going back together, just don't crank down on it, you'll be able to take it apart again.
Oh, it's just that easy to replace those little O-rings. Alright guys, well, thanks for watching. Hope this might help somebody out there who uses these no-loss fittings. Take it easy.